Crypto Sigger, and you're watching my Cryptic Cryptids YouTube channel. On this episode, I take a look into crypto crystalline silica or quartz and wonderstone and some I find out some pretty amazing things and I also take a look at some of the rocks and boulders made of flesh and bone that's what I found out when I researched wonderstone so crypto crystalline quartz and the rocks and boulders made of flesh and bone so before leaving Rainbow Rock Quarry, I want to talk about some of the stones that were mined there. Rhyolite, Chert, and Wonderstone. And I went there and I got some pieces of Wonderstone. And the more I looked at it, the more I really began to wonder about the Wonderstone. Because I noticed that it has similar features that fossils have like with holes in it and um, just looking at it up close it looks like just a mash of teeth and bones and flesh and that's literally what made me start researching Wonderstone because you'd be walking along and see this bright red piece of it looks like meat it looks like dinosaur chunks like petrified chunks of dinosaur meat flash petrified or something like a dinosaur exploded and then there's this picture I didn't take this rock and I kind of wish I would have but it was just sitting on this rock like there was blood dripping dried blood dripping down from the rock and it's like a head of some kind of creature I mean Wonderstone at this location is very strange Wonderstone is a form of cryptocrystalline quartz. There's a few different types of cryptocrystalline quartz. And of course, the reason it's called cryptocrystalline quartz, that got my curiosity going. But I guess is because there's microscopic pieces of quartz. And you can't see it unless you have a magnifying glass. So they call it hidden or crypto. And um, chert is another form of this, and prehistoric people used to like to use it. And chert, one form of chert, the form originating from the biochemical root, is thought to have formed either from direct precipitation of silica from seawater or from the fossilized silica-rich skeletons of tiny sea creatures. And the chert occurs as nodules inside limestone deposits and then gets exposed um, on the surface by weathering. So I looked up biochemical rocks like chert made up of cryptocrystalline silica and find out it is formed from opaline silica skeletons. And the silica, sil silica skeletons add to the bottom as sediments and dissolve and they form calcareous ooze. Biogenous sediment ooze is microfine sediments, at least 30%, having a biological origin. And they build up very slow. There's two main types, calcareous ooze and silicious ooze. Calcareous ooze is the ooze made from skeletons and not only skeletons but shells teeth nails anything like that it's thick sediment now silicious ooze my understanding of silicious ooze is that it is the body fluids of decomposing creatures so the skeletons are the calcareous and then the silicious is the heavier liquids that sink down and gather in pockets and nodules in the limestones where they're then compressed and then harden. So the silicious ooze is the flesh and the calcareous ooze is the bones. Biogenous oozes turn to rock they can harden and lithify and turn to stone. 
So rhyolite, I found something interesting about rhyolite, which is that it is made from lava that is so thick and then it builds up pressure until there's a gas explosion and the volcano throws the rocks all over the place in particles ranging from ash all the way up to big blocky chunks, which is kind of like what I was saying I thought before I researched it. So, you know, I wonder, is it hypothetically possible that if giants and dinosaurs were caught up at the time of the rhyolite volcanic explosion, that includes ash, could they, after any number of years, turn to stone mountains? Just, is it possible? I think I can answer my own question with Mount Vesuvius in Pompeii, Italy, and what happened there. And what about Fontainebleau boulders in France? These boulders look so almost exactly like huge, huge creatures and the geology behind them. I mean, I know I used Wikipedia for reference, but I did like their definition because they say that the boulders in Fontainebleau are erosive remnants from the Oligocene age. So it says their appearance may have been accentuated by localized mineralization and silification of sandstone rock forming large nodules that are resistant to erosion. Um, hypothetically, along with cryptocrystalline silica, could there also exist a form of macrocrystalline silica from older macroorganisms instead of microorganisms? because on the top of one of the travertine rocks in the Salton Sea area are three faces in a row looking up. And it's in the same area with all this prehistory. Um, you can see the one on the top, the one in the middle, and then again, the one in the middle and the one on the bottom. So let's take a closer look. This one I love so much. I mean, you see it, right? The Mayan looking kind of face and with the big pouty lips. And so what's interesting about this is that I decided that I would, you know, just kind of trace the lines in a computer program. And, and then I just was tracing extra lines to see if maybe I could get any extra information from it. And I did. A 3D effect. So it's like, not only did I get, oh, this looks like an eye, this looks like a mouth, this looks like a, well, his nose, I think, was uh, blown off. Oh, a chin. But I got a 3D effect from it when I added more lines that I saw. And again, this one looks like some kind of a monster creature. He's got round bulbous eyes and his nose looks blown off, but he's got a mouthful of fangs. And again, the extra lines, they create a like 3D. They start to create somewhat of a 3D effect. I mean, what are the coinc what are the chance how many coincidences does it take for one and then this third one he's got a row of teeth and they kind of curve too they're they're starting to get a little bit of a 3d effect and again it's like how many teeth before it's not a coincidence and it's not period periodelia before you can just, you know, you don't blame it. You can't blame it on periodelia forever, can you? Okay, look, there's a few more giant faces out there in the rocks, but let's just talk about one more. Now, I'm going to get this from the Proceedings.08 Pignolio PDF um, article about the Rainbow Rock Wonderstone source and its place in the Regional Material Distribution Studies. And I just absolutely loved this report they did but I'm taking an excerpt out of it because they're describing something that I think I can find on the map okay so it says Rogers noted that just west of this site and above the highest Blake sea level is a large rhyolite quarry which was worked from the San Diego times down to and including the Desert Kauia. Okay, and it says, it continues on to say that um, 
they're, they're talking about the rhyolite site was given secondary attention during these excavations on a terrace just below and west of the Rainbow Rock Quarry, and that this area was known as the Truck Haven Man Burial Site. The burial was radiocarbon dated at approximately 5,000 years before present. Okay, that and a couple little sentences here and there that I read from different sources, I put some map things together and look, let, let's look at this. So here I've circled the Rainbow Rock Quarry and I got a little compass down there. So just west of that, I remember hearing that there's a big wash. I read that somewhere. And then I read that um, after that to the west, there is a smaller rhyolite mine and that on a terrace just below the rhyolite mine, there was a rock cairn, and that under that was the Truck Haven Man burial site. So I'm looking at this terrace as closely as I can underneath the rhyolite mine because I'm thinking, even though it was a long time ago, they had to have, um, they were archeologists, but they still, they unburied this ancient man and then they would have had to have made a trail going back out of there. And there's only one way out. So there should be a sign of, you know, this little thing that happened and a trail leading out. And of course, I found this the most likely suspect. And more interesting too, still yet, is that right under that site on another kind of lower terrace it looks like I something caught my eye and I zoom in and see a huge stone face looking up and here it is I'm zooming in I'm zooming in again how many coincidences you got the shadow alone has forehead eye socket nose mouth chin every single line. I mean, this to me looks like it could be something, um, something worth investigating. However, pretty sure it's off limits, but you can get close and I may very well do that someday. Seems to be that my wonderings about Wonderstone were justified. And then facts I learned like that it was created in, ex in an explosion made from petrified creatures that harden and turn to stone. And I just, you know, want to know how big of a stretch is it to apply that same science to biogenous macroorganisms that also turn to stone in an even more distant past. So join me next time on another adventure as I go farther down the rabbit hole. And stay tuned for what I find in the Valley of the Mastodons. Thanks for watching my Cryptic Cryptids YouTube channel. And if you like that and want to see more, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.